This is a list of the top eight financial worries that keep us up at night. According to Wealth at Work, a leading financial well-being and retirement specialist. And I want to discuss, as a qualified financial planner, what the solutions to these worries are. Let's start with the worry in eighth place with something that bothers 21% of us. Not being able to keep up with friends and family. Starting the list with the one that probably annoys me the most, as there is simply no need for it whatsoever, and yet most of us suffer with this from time to time. Keeping up with the Joneses. To think one in five people are genuinely worried about this is mad to me. It's a game no one ever wins, and once you realise what a charade this way of living is, you will feel a lot freer financially. Honestly, if your friends care what car you drive or what clothes you wear, then you need some new friends. It's a totally unnecessary worry and one you simply need to get over. It has actually been studied scientifically. I mean, look at this. Some serious calculations and graphs to try and determine the relationship between happiness and this idea of keeping up with the Joneses. I'll spare you hunting down your old school calculator and give you what I think is the most meaningful conclusion from this study, and it's this. The worst off will be people with a sufficiently high wage that are induced into work because of the keeping up with the Joneses effect. If that doesn't tell you all you need to know, then I don't know what will. Remember, live on your own terms. No one else worth caring about cares what you're doing, and it's better to live within your means and under budget than live a life of luxury whilst drowning in debt. Speaking of which, look what's next. The level of debt you have right now. 22% of us are worried about our current debt levels. Average debt levels are consistently rising. Average debt per person, average household debt, credit card debt, all going up. One of the most worrying statistics is that, on average, one person is declared bankrupt every five and a half minutes in England and Wales. If debt is keeping you up at night, you have a choice to make. It's simple, and really it all comes down to priorities. You need to stop buying new cars, new clothes, or whatever it is that's making you get yourself in debt, and make a conscious decision to change how you spend your money. That being said, however, I totally appreciate that many people are genuinely struggling to make ends meet, and it's not a new Mercedes that's getting them into debt. It's trying to keep food on the table and the heating on for the kids. I totally get that. I really do. But getting out of debt, and crucially staying out of debt, will help free up your greatest asset, your income, and go some way to solving lots of your financial issues. If you don't have monthly payments servicing oodles of debt, you instead have disposable income, and this is the shift that needs to happen to get rid of this worry. Make a list of all your debts and research either the debt avalanche or debt snowball approach to clearing debt. They both work. And whether you're a snowball or avalanche fan, it doesn't matter really. What's more important is that you sit down and make the conscious decision that you are fed up of being in debt and worrying about it. And now is the time to take some action. Not being able to afford your lifestyle. Whether it's four signs or six or even seven ways, not being able to afford your lifestyle is a money worry for 25% of people, so one in four of us. Without being too blunt about it, if you're worried about affording your own lifestyle, you need to take a look at your lifestyle and the maths behind it. After all, it's your choice how you choose to spend your money, no one else's. You choose to drive a brand new financed BMW when a cheaper second-hand car would do the same job. Financially successful people live within their means, they spend less than they earn and they invest the difference. There's only ever two sides to the equation of personal finance, and that's what comes in versus what goes out. If the balance is out of whack and needs altering, you either need to get more money coming in or find a way to have less money going out, or a combination of both. It's honestly no more complicated than that. Being unable to manage household bills and expenses, including the mortgage. 27% of us are worried about this one. This is less worrying about affording your own lifestyle or the keeping up with the Joneses trap and more about the day-to-day -day expenditure and being able to meet it. And this one is tougher as it's not so much of a choice. You need to feed your families and keep a roof over your head and so it's natural to see why you would be worried if you felt you were struggling to do this.
The way to give yourself the best shot at success here is a really solid budget and being on top of your numbers. I recommend that you use a zero-based budget approach to your finances where every pound or dollar is given a job to do. Your money is either spent, invested or given away. And giving every last bit of cash a job to do in a written down budget is key to running household finances. This stuff doesn't happen by accident. You need a financial plan in place to be successful and a solid budget is this plan. If you are genuinely struggling and it's causing you sleepless nights, there are a number of charities that can help. The Money Charity, Money Helper, Citizens Advice are just some examples. I'll leave some links in the description. Not being able to reach future goals. For example, buying a house. 27% of us are also worried about not ever getting to achieve the bigger things we want. The main one here is buying a house. Over 360,000 people were first-time buyers last year and 400-something thousand the year before that. The challenge of getting on the property ladder is twofold. Getting together enough of a lump of savings to put down as a deposit and then affording the monthly mortgage payments once you've got it. I find a lot of people are not concrete enough on their bigger aspirations and might say they want to buy a house, but they don't really know what it would take to do it. I always ask clients when talking about any financial objective two questions. How much do you need and by when? Once you know this, you can start doing something about putting together a plan to get you there. Research how much does the house you want to buy cost. Do some affordability calculators and even better, speak to a mortgage advisor to find out what you could borrow. Get researching and get into the detail rather than just having a wishy-washy objective. Is the area you were thinking about out of reach? Maybe there's a cheaper neighbourhood nearby that would work and that you could afford. If you discover you need £30,000 to buy a house, say, and you want to do that in five years' time, you need to put aside £500 a month. Do your budget and work out how you will do this. It's all about being intentional. Like I said before, this stuff, it doesn't happen by accident. Getting into debt in the future. Now this one shocked me a bit, if I'm honest, especially given how high up the list it is, as 30% of us are worried about getting into debt in the future. That's 30% of us worrying about things that haven't even happened yet, a potential future problem. And it got me thinking, this can only stem from not having the proper money management systems and tools in place now, so you know that your finances are fragile and you're at risk of falling into debt. Get your foundation strong. If you've got a cash emergency fund of between three and six months essential expenditure, a solid budget in place, and as a result, are able to invest for your future and your bigger financial aspirations, you needn't worry about having to take on unwanted debt in the future. Not having enough savings aside for unexpected costs. 32% of us, so just about one in three are worried about this, making it in fact our joint top worry. The emergency fund, something I talk about all the time. The thing you must simply have before investing any money or even beginning to think about bigger financial aspirations. It'll keep your stress levels down, stop you spending on a whim and stop you making bad financial decisions. Three to six months of your essential expenses set aside in cash that is readily accessible at all times. That's what you need. Plain and simple. Life is full of curveballs and they are often expensive. A big vet's bill, car breaks down, boiler packs up. This is what your emergency fund is for and it's why we all need one. If you've not got one, make this a priority. It's time to get as much income coming in as you can, squash your expenses right down and set up a savings account where a portion of your income can go every month to build this up. And remember, it's important this is kept as readily available cash. This isn't money that should be tied up or invested. Being unable to afford to retire when you want to. And in joint top spot with 32% of us worrying about this, it's not being able to retire when we want to. It's the biggest financial aspiration of all for most people. Getting to a place where you don't have to work anymore, or at very least only work if you choose to. This in fact is what I spend most of my time as a financial planner working on with clients, which now makes total sense really, given it seems to be our biggest concern. I come back to something I mentioned earlier in this video. How much do you need and buy when? 
Standard Life has some figures for a very basic retirement. A couple needs 17 grand or so. This is super basic, mind, not even an allowance to run a car. Not to mention these figures are from 2019, so the figures will be much higher now. If you want a bit of breathing space, the average couple needs 31 grand-ish to fund a moderate retirement, then you can actually afford a holiday or two. But if you want the picture postcard retirement most of us dream of with trips away and general luxuries, you'll need an income of £50,000 a year as a couple. Now that's 50 grand in 2019 money, that's more like 64 grand in today's money. Again, you need to get specific and set a proper goal, not a wishy-washy one. If you want to retire when you're 50 and you decide you'll need 50 grand a year in today's money each year to do that and have the retirement you want, then if I was your advisor, what I would do with this is revalue that 50 grand forward until you're 50. Let's say you're 35 now, so I need to revalue that 50 grand 15 years to take into account the fact that inflation will mean you'll need a lot more in 15 years' time to fund what 50 grand a year in today's money will buy you. At 2.5% annual inflation, remember those days, that 50 grand would mean you'd need about 73 grand in 15 years' time to have the same buying power. I would then turn this annual income figure into a pot size, a lump sum figure that I would estimate you would need to provide that level of income until age 100, say, the rest of your life. You have to think about other sources of income here, like uh, state pension and when that might kick in, if it still even exists by then, and the effect of inflation too over that 50-year retirement as well and an assumption for what kind of investment returns you might get. It's quite an in-depth calculation and something a good financial planner can really help with. Now you know what you need in the pot and that you've got 15 years to get it there, you can start to work out alongside the assets you've already got, pensions and investments, etc., what you'll need to start investing now each month towards this goal. I keep banging on about it, I know, but it's all about being intentional and really getting a detailed handle on the goal, not just accidentally hoping it falls into your lap, because it won't. If there's anything keeping you up at night that I haven't talked about here, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can offer any words of wisdom. When you look through these worries, you realise that most of it is all behavioural stuff and the solutions are actually simple and boring. So be intentional. And if you want to start on your investing journey today, there are links in the description of this video where you can open up accounts with some great investing platforms like Trading212 or Invest Engine, and get benefits like free shares from using my links. A great way to get started. I know there's a lot going on in the news at the moment and it's all a bit doom and gloom. That's why you need to watch this video next where I look at whether in fact it's time to stop investing altogether, thinking about things like savings rates or maybe paying off your mortgage instead. It might just make you think a bit differently. <laughs>